Dollar thirteen, almost five percent higher. Um, let's December see. silver is up my... above twenty-five, five point two seven percent. Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. Got Denver Dave Kranzler over there, as always, and it's nice, Dave. Welcome you on into Denver Dave's weekly silver and gold market update. How are you today, my friend? Doing great. I was, was just going to ask you if you're enjoying the beautiful weather we have here right now, but I forgot you're not in Denver right now. It's been uh, like two months since I left, but no, I'm <laughs> glad you missed me. <laughs> Thank well, you. I do miss you. I just, you know, it's this weather is so incredible. You want to share it with everyone. So, well, you could share it with your buddy Yara, who mans the Miles Franklin line, which our sponsor for today. That real quick before we get started, Dave. I mean, you're. You've become like such a celebrity that now you have Stop. your own sponsor for the episode. Um, and any uh, buying or selling precious metals, anybody wants to do that, Arcadia at Miles Franklin with Dave's buddy Yara, who is in Denver and has silver cougarans at only $3.99 over spot. Did you get one, Dave? I uh, know. This is a... Um... This is a 10 ounce silver maple leaf. Hmm. Get, getting ready to move up north if they ever decide this election. <laughs> no, actually one of my subscribers- Canada, I have currency, let me in. <laughs> one of my subscribers sent it to me as, as a thank you for all the Damn money man. my ideas have made him. You look at you. You got women from Australia sending you those opals. I want one of those. Uh, Andy is not, I gotta get him to, I'm going to get those opals. We're going to launch a uh, Arcadia store eventually. Those were a beautiful coin. So any silver, uh, there you go. Love this coin. So you can roll like Denver Dave by emailing Arcadia at Miles Franklin. Uh, get your silver Cougarans. What do we got there? Three ninety nine dollars over spot. And fortunately, Dave, I'm excited that this week it worked out. This is going to be aired Thursday night. We are recording Thursday morning because look at this big boy, silver. I, I know Kitco is not always completely most accurate, but dollar thirteen, almost five percent higher. Um, let's December see, silver is up my... above twenty five, five point two seven percent. It's uh, tracking at uh, on a percentage basis two times higher quicker than gold so yeah well it's certainly nice to see a rally i am imagining that a lot of silver folks out there are happy and excited uh we had the election two days ago um uh, dave I, I had a couple of people from out of town call me maybe out of the country they said they heard we had the u.s election so just before we start with the markets, uh, can you recap uh, who won the election and why? You got me. My uh, good longtime friend, Jesse of Jesse's Cafe American. I don't know if you've ever been to his website. It's, it's world renowned, actually. Um, he, we were emailing on Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday morning. He said, did you vote this time? <laughs> and I basically said, is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> Um, I mean, why, it doesn't really matter who wins and why, because who, whoever sits in the Oval Office doesn't control the economy. They don't control monetary policy. Um, they really don't control much of anything. I mean, Bill Clinton admitted that uh, after his first hundred days in office. So um, it's it's the, the the entities that are in control of the money supply that basically pull the strings in this country. So uh, who wins, on, who won on Tuesday? I don't know. I, I mean, uh, I'm paying attention to who they determined to be the winner, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah, well, look at, there's our gold chart. I mean, uh, I guess in my silver centric world, I don't always check over there, but quite a spike. Again, you saw uh, gold floating around 1900 uh, for, last couple of days, last couple of weeks, and spiking quite a bit higher up, $43 on the day. 
So it's interesting. Fifty-one dollars December futures basis. With Kitco. The, Forget Kitco. I I don't even know why people go to Kitco. It's not even a it's not even a true spot price. I go to Kitco mainly. I like getting you riled up that I go to Kitco. Thank you. Now the coin dealers, you know, price off of the Kitco price, but it's not a true spot price. So I I don't I rarely go to Kitco. All right. Where where does Denver Dave go so that all your fans watching at home they can know how to follow the markets like you do? Well, where, where, where is a good spot price? Investing. Well, the spot price is the price that's set at the AM and PM London fix. And you used to know what that was an hour after it happened, but now they now they don't release the the AM and PM fix data until about twelve hours after the the PM fix, or maybe ten hours after the PM fix. And their and their move to become more transparent, they delayed the public, the, you know, making public the the the, the price fix data. <laughs> well, so, it's like it's like everything else. When one of these one of these you know centralized organizations tell you they're going to become more transparent you know right away they're going to become even less transparent i mean we've seen that with the fed so um you know you go to um investing.com and you can get free streaming of of um the front month gold and silver prices front month um comex contract gold and silver prices yeah you can see it down there although dave it's kind of interesting with that picture it always uh, brings back some memories. That's actually where I was for the last couple of years of my time on the floor uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. So I'd walk past a lot of these guys who were generally, we were like the last ones to know anything of significance. Most of it happened off floor. So, you know, this guy, the, these, these are the brokers and the floor traders, uh, not, not where the action is happening here. Interesting Dow rallies as investors keep betting on Biden. I don't know if it's the Dow that's rallying. Maybe it's the printing press. But like you point out down here, gold and silver, uh, we see 52 bucks on gold, buck 30 on silver. A uh, little interesting, Dave. It, it's reflecting the expectation that the Fed is going to have to print a lot more money once the you know the whole political thing going on settles down, and that's that is the case. I mean, even even uh, Mitch McConnell said that he supports a very large stimulus bill that'll be pointed at bailing out the states. Now, uh, say, how does the government, how's the government going to fund that, especially since most of the foreign buyers who have been financing our government deficit for the last 40 years are, have been pulling away from that. Um, so it's, it's the Fed. I mean, half of the money that was printed after 2008 went to buying treasuries and mortgages. And um, a, a fair amount of the money that has been printed since March has also been used to, to fund government debt issuance. So, uh, you know, what, what the markets are telling you is that there's going to be a lot more of that to come. And it wouldn't have mattered who was elected. A lot more of that to come is pretty interesting because here is the Fed's balance sheet I don't know if my favorite part, but here's 2011 when gold and silver at all time highs. And just look at what's happened since then. So from the beginning of the Fed until almost 100 years later, you got here, let's call that two, almost three trillion. And then just in the last five years alone, I mean, we're approaching Weimar territory. I think if we knew the real numbers, we're already there, but... And and then they're talking about more, right? Well, they and the the Fed officials have been prepping us for that for the last um, really the last month. I mean, I, I you know I don't know if you noticed, but um, starting like around mid October, maybe even early October, it was like every single Fed official was giving a speech every single day of the week, and they all talked about the need, the potential need for more uh, stimulus to keep the recovery going. Well, you know, honestly, other than maybe the housing market, the recovery stalled in the middle of the summer. And I have data that I demonstrate that fact that I, you know, publish in my short sellers journal, as you know. 
Yeah, well, I don't think there's any recovery, unfortunately, except that, you know, you're printing dollars, sending them out, and they have to go somewhere. Certainly the stock market, real estate market, bond market are where uh, some of the places they're going. So Dave, I mean, you gave the fundamental reasons that it makes sense. I don't know exactly why today versus yesterday the metals are rallying and maybe just being okay with not expecting that to always be a linear connection is the way to go. But I'm curious to get your opinion. I'm sure you saw this blue line here. <laughs> it's the election day and all right, you know, on one hand, I get it. You have a big event coming. So they would think there'd be volatility, but all right, here it is floating between 24 and 24 half all day. And then here around the time where we were supposed to be getting a winner, maybe it was just because this is where they, someone realized, wait, these guys are actually going to bungle it and we're not going to find out who wins. But I wonder, I thought, again, responding to my audience. So I'm going to stop leaving my opinions in here. This, I'll just ask the audience questions. Basically, people thought that seemed pretty unusual. And here on the sulfur chart with the volume, we should go figure what we have right down there. And, but Dave, that's not even the question. I actually, I know, and I get at a critic on Twitter, start my questions, I don't answer them. I'll, I'll fix that one day, but Dave, the real question for you, do you think anyone in the CFTC or Department of Justice is aware that there is a massive volume, spike of volume, at the same time the price plummeted after sitting in a pretty tight trading range for the entire day? Well, well let's be clear about one thing. That's not, that's not physical silver. That's not a chart of physical silver trading. That is the COMEX silver futures, okay? And the spike in volume is likely hedge fund algos, you know, dump, you know with the help of bank intervention, dumping silver contracts. That's all that is. And it, it, the, it was attributed to the news that it looked like Trump was gonna win Florida. For some reason, Biden's been associated with the reflation trade. So you buy gold and silver and Trump has been associated, I guess, with the opposite. For, I mean, it's stupid. It, it, I mean, it's just, it's Orwellian media narrative. So, and that's what happened. Because I remember I was I was um, working and I looked up and it was all of a sudden it wasn't just gold and paper, gold and silver that spiked down like that. It was also the equity futures. This is all paper derivative trading. It's it's meaningless. What's what's meaningful is what you're seeing today in gold and silver because that was supported by very heavy buying from India overnight. Very heavy buying by India, and and I think a lot of this. I think a lot of this buying in gold is it has been supported well mostly by Indian buying right now but but generally physical buying globally maybe not in the United States per se because people would rather take their capital one credit card and and spend it on Amazon but um, a, a lot of the world understands the the need and the desire to own physical gold and silver as a as a hedge against the fiat currency devaluation that's going en masse around the world, but especially in the United States right now. And do you see that changing at any point soon? No, it's going to intensify. I've been thinking that in terms of things, you know, and I, I try not to make guarantees about the financial markets. It's like, you know, it's not really how it works. You know, there's but I mean, I think it's safe to guarantee that A, not only will the Fed ever raise interest rates under the current financial system, B, not only won't they stop printing money, but, but C, that not only they'll have to continue printing, but at an increasingly, like at they an accelerating rate, there, you they won't can't even stop be able printing. to- They can't stop printing. It, they can't even like keep a, the rate like the same. It's like a heroin addict. You need more and more just to keep yourself alive. And the minute you, you, you try to stop, you, you have a seizure and die if you can't get a hold of heroin. So um, they, they can't stop. And I, I said this, I've been saying this for a long time. I said this in, in 08 when they started printing money. I said, this is just the start of this. 
And the next time around, they're gonna have to print twice as much to try and get the same desired effect. Well, most of, most of what they're doing, well, there's two things that they're doing with the money printing. They're funding, they're refunding the bank balance sheets because the bank balance sheets are melting down. And that's what we saw in sep starting in September, 2019. So that wasn't repo, that was a bunch of bullshit. And they're financing the government debt. Part of the reason why they, they're able to hold interest rates down is the Fed is soaking up all the excess supply of, of new government debt issuance. If, if the Fed stepped away from this thing, we saw on that money supply chart that you, in this monetary base chart that you had up, you saw it, it, it turned down really briefly for a second toward the end there. Yeah, well, as soon as that happened, the market started to crap out. That's, that's the sell-off we got in, in, in September, all right? So, so they, you know, that just tells you if they take their foot off the, not just take their foot off the, you know, they, they've got their, their foot pressed to the floor, the accelerator, okay? And not just lift up a little bit, it, you know, if they just lift up a little bit, not even take it off completely, the markets crap out. And if they stop buying the excess government debt supply, the 10-year bond would probably be over 5% by now maybe higher. <clears throat> yeah, well, how do you so really I guess see? the point here is, yeah, that not only are they going to have to print, they're going to have to print a lot more than they've already printed. Otherwise, this thing collapses. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's what and it'll collapse anyway, under its own weight. It's just, you know, it's just a question of how long it'll take. Yeah. And uh that is the key question remains. Although real quick, here's a look at the some of the miners today. Wow, look at First Majestic had earnings today up 10, over 10%. Uh, there's Silvercrest. Look at Silvercrest. 12 and a half, MAG 10%. And it's interesting. They've been rallying throughout the day. I mean, I, so many times we've seen the miners up on the open and then towards the end of the day, it's just like this magnet anchor <laughs> pulling them back down. So great to see the shares up. Um, any thoughts about any of the miners and what you're expecting for third quarter earnings? Well, the companies that have reported already, the earnings are blowout earnings. They're, they're, it's incredible. Um, revenues, operating income, cash flow, that's all doubling and tripling from last year. And, and um, you know, the, 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 higher, the higher the price of gold and silver go, the quicker their earnings accelerate. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a fixed cost model. As soon as you start, as soon as the price of gold and silver go above your fixed costs, every dollar that you take in in, in additional revenue goes right to the bottom line and, and right to the cash flow statement. So, um, <clears throat> what what I I was discussing this with a subscriber actually maybe just yesterday. They're asking me, you know, what's up with the juniors? They're, they seem to be lagging right now. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, first of all, the large caps are starting to, to um, report their Q3 and the numbers are blowout, way better than expectations. Um, but second of all, this is what we want to see in a healthy bull move, right? So when, when the market took off at the end of 2015, early 2016, the juniors screamed for six months. And, and and it was a short-lived, non-sustainable move that it made. Right now, what we're seeing is we're seeing the large caps have been outperforming the juniors. And the juniors got decimated in, in September and October. And that was all the hot money that piled in during the summer, mainly in July. Um, that was the hot money selling. And a lot of them probably lost money because they don't understand what they're doing in this sector. Um, and it was great because I was... I was, as they were, you know, I started selling in August, selling down some of my positions. And, and in the last week, I've been reloading, you know, as the, as the final idiots dump their positions, you know, and swear off the sector until it gets hot again. <laughs> and um, so anyway, the, the smaller cap juniors have been lagging. And that's what we want to see. This is, a, this is a healthy, this means we're going to get a healthy bull move here. Because it's and then at some point the juniors are going to start to accelerate and outperform the large caps. So um, that, that's why you're seeing stocks like well, Mag's not quite a producer yet, but they they will be. They'll be if they start pouring gold in December, and um, 
some of those other large caps that you had on there are up, you know, nine, 10, 12 percent. So um, at some point, the juniors, which are lagging, will not only catch up, they'll accelerate. And that's that's the healthy pattern that we've seen when there's been uh, sustainable bull moves in the sector since I've been doing it in 2001, starting in 2001. Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting. Uh... You can see GDX, GDXJ. Yeah, but GDXJ is not really a junior index. It was, you know, the average market cap of the stocks in there, I think, are at least a billion dollars. I'm talking about stocks that are micro caps that have, you know, well under a hundred million dollar market cap that have the potential to be five and ten baggers. Dave, have you ever seen? Actually, I'm going to stop the share. Have you ever seen what's actually in the silver? <laughs> The junior, what are they calling it? Prime Junior Silver Miner ETF, the SILJ. Do you know what's actually in there? I haven't looked at the composition of the index in a while. I don't, I don't really track SILJ. I mean, because I pulled this up a couple of times. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I can get, you know, <laughs> you know something to match the junior miners, which and I'm looking at Pan American, which... <laughs> that's a, that's like a, I don't know, it's really a gold stock at this cap. point, is, aren't these they? Are not, these are not juniors. None of these are juniors. I mean, Pan American, I don't know if they're really genuinely a silver stock when you look at a uh, percentage of revenue from metals. Um, First Majestic, I love First Majestic. I don't know that they're a junior silver miner. Yamana's not a silver stock. Yamana makes, produces more copper than it does than it does silver. This is what is in the SILJ. I know. I, I saw Silvercrest Metals is in there, okay? And they don't produce yet but it's got close to a billion dollar market cap. That's not a junior. I, I was investing and put it in my, in my newsletter, Silvercrest Metals in January, 2016, when it was 16 cents, not $9. <laughs> now, Dave, it's up today. Uh, let's take a look. It is Silvercrest, I mean- uh, Up 12%, dude. Wow, up a buck 44. Yeah, there you go. Uh, hoax, hoax, hoax shield or hoax child, however you say that. That's not a junior mining stock. That's a that's a that's a very old global mining company. I hear you. It's, 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 it's it was founded and it's run by aristocrat a junior mining company. <laughs> well, that's why I just want to. You know why I don't follow SILJ? It's a waste of time if you're looking for silver. If you're looking for silver junior stock ideas. But Dave, would you say that that's a great reason to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell right there so that you can stay posted on future episodes of Denver Dave's weekly silver and gold market update? <laughs> I think it is a good idea. Well, there you go. That's right, folks. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, again, we try and make it fun, but also... Yeah, these are some of the things that I don't think people often are aware of. I was stunned when I saw it myself. Now, fortunately, I mean, you know, not a bad thing to own. You're still getting silver exposure. But if you're expecting junior miners, uh, Dave, maybe we could put together the, in fact, we did actually have a conversation with some other uh, royalty, Dave, Denver Dave's royalty index. Uh, maybe... Maybe I'll uh, see what I can do about the silver part of at least giving investors where, because I would say, you know, when people hear about the 10 or 20 or 50 baggers, that's generally going to be in the junior silver miners where you're going to be hoping to find those. Would you agree happen with, with that? Can, can happen with gold juniors also. But in in silver world, you're looking at the juniors as opposed to a producer yes. or. Well, I, I actually, so Silvercrest from when I, recommended it's been a 56 bagger now those are rare but five and ten baggers are not i mean you can get lucky more often with with you know that type of return yeah well actually you know what that's not true as i'm writing a little note here you might think dave that someone's just gonna luck into it and one might think so but that's not true. And I know it was a trick question, but Silver Chris is on it today because you really can stack the odds in your favor by going to <laughs> investmentresearchdynamics.com. And then, I mean, you could just listen to the Mining Stock Daily with our friend Trevor Hall and uh, co-produced 
Still don't know what that means. They're co-produced by Dave Kranzler. You just like tell him, you tell him what to do or, but. No, I, mean, I write the, I write the um, gold and silver, the precious metals market commentary at ooh. the beginning of each um, episode. Well, there you go. Here's our good buddy, Trevor, who's been on the show before. I've uh, been meaning to check in with him. Would be fun to see what he's seeing with these stocks. And then, of course, you have the Mining Stock Journal right here. Uh, and um, again, there you go. 20 bucks a month. So it's nice having another set of eyes on the whole deal, which is what Dave provides. So Dave, I thank you for that. And uh, we're going to wrap up for today because oh, I was trying to show you something glorious. I'm going to save it as a surprise, but I've been getting investor uh, audience requests. They want those silver Ben Bernanke figurines that I've been talking about. <laughs> so I'm going to go track down an artist. We're going to see if we can get those by Christmas time. But in either case, Dave, appreciate you being here today. And um, just see what continues happening as we wait for a winner to the election. Oh, and I, have, I did have a final question for you. What is the price of gold and silver at the next election? Man, I don't know. It, I'll tell you what. It's going to be higher than 2000 bucks an ounce and higher than $25 an ounce but lower than infinity. How's that? Well, there's, that's a nice, uh, <laughs> that's a market so wide you could drive a truck through it. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see what the Fed has planned. Oh, gee, I would have to think there's a good probability this nonsense is done by then. Although, uh, on the other hand, she had say for anyone, especially hopefully people who are watching the show are doing well. And I think that I think people who generally find this stuff or figuring things out kind of interesting to think, gee, if I could buy shares for the next four years at these levels. Interesting. So with that said, thank you, Denver Dave. We will look forward to your appearance next week, as always. And for a little more coverage of the markets, how it's fitting with the election, what else is going on. Stay tuned because it is coming your way now.